Okay, so those are the changes that you would expect to see in the autonomic nervous system related to the increase in sympathetic nervous system activity. The final change that you would see is an increase in the release of various hormones. Okay, so the most important of which is an increase in adrenaline. Okay, now what adrenaline will basically do is just supplement the activity of the sympathetic nervous system. So we would have already had changes occurring in the cardiovascular system as a result of noradrenaline uh, and other changes uh, via the sympathetic nervous system. The hormonal system takes effect much later in exercise. So it, it would occur during prolonged exercise um, and would, would basically come along to supplement the changes within the sympathetic nervous system. So I'm not going to talk too much about the hormonal system, okay? There are other hormones which are involved in cardiovascular regulation um, and, and fluid balance as well, and they are critical to uh, performance physiology, uh, but th those topics can be covered in a separate video. Now, one final thing that I want to talk about is uh, 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 something called cardiovascular drift, which is a physiological occurrence when you're exercising in very extreme environments and you're doing high intensity exercise, okay? So cardiovascular drift, okay? And cardiovascular drift is something which occurs in, I'll put intense exercise, you can use the word extreme as well, in a hot environment, okay? So we pop this on here, okay? So that's cardiovascular drift. So what is actually happening with cardiovascular drift? Best to see it in a graph. So again, we've got rest, moderate, and then heavy. And what, what we're actually having with cardiovascular drift is that you, we always get an increase in cardiac output, represented by a CO when we exercise. And also heart rate increases linearly with the intensity of the exercise, okay? Now, what will actually happen with prolonged exercise in the heat is you'll actually get a drop in stroke volume, okay? So the stroke volume will actually start to, to tail off and you also start to get changes in the mean arterial pressure as well. Now, we know that stroke volume and heart rate are related and they determine the cardiac output. So obviously, if we have changes in one, the other must compensate to maintain cardiac output. In this case, we're having a reduction in stroke volume, so heart rate increases. Now the question is, why do we get this reduction in stroke volume? Well, the straightforward answer is that most of our blood is going to the skin. Because we're in a hot environment, we need to cool the blood, we need to cool the body to maintain uh, a degree of cool temperature. Um, so we have a, a stroke volume which drops because all of the blood has gone to the skin, so you've got increased skin blood flow. Okay. That causes a, a drop in, in the um, uh, stroke volume, so the heart rate compensates to, to maintain that. Now, if we were to continue to exercise, we actually start to get a reduction in heart rate as well, so that will eventually tail off. Now, one important thing about the heart rate is that if the heart rate is very high, then you're going to have decreased leucotropy. So remember from earlier, leucotropy is the relaxation of the heart, it's very important for the heart to have a state of relaxation even when you're doing very intense exercise because that's when the coronary circulation is supplied with the blood to the myocardium, okay? So with very high heart rates, we have a reduced relaxation time so the heart is not receiving uh, enough blood. So what ends up happening with very prolonged exercises, you start to get what would be considered a safety mechanism and heart rate starts to drop again so that you can meet the myocardial oxygen demand and there can be that blood flow during the relaxation phase of the cardiac cycle. So cardiovascular drift is a combination of exercising very intensely in a hot environment, a reduction in skin blood flow which causes a drop in stroke volume, compensatory increase in heart rate which will potentially reduce leucotropy or relaxation, uh, but the most important thing is that cardiac output is, is maintained. So in summary we've talked about 
Four main changes that occur when you start to do aerobic endurance exercise. We've gone through the mechanical changes, so we have an increase in the activity of the skeletal muscle pump and the respiratory pump. We then get changes in the muscle, which are metabolic, and we get vasodilation, we get the release of adenosine, nitric oxide, we get oscillatory frequency signals generated by the microvessels to cause dilation of upstream vessels, that's known as flow motion. Um, and we we also then get mass sympathetic discharge. So this is the autonomic nervous system kicking in. It causes vasoconstriction of the blood vessels where tissues do not need blood flow. So the GI system, the renal system, uh, and there's of course vasodilation of the skeletal muscles already. The sympathetic nervous system also causes an increase in heart rate because it acts on uh, beta receptors in the heart to increase the, the, the firing of the sinoatrial node as well as the contractility, the strength of the contraction. Now the sympathetic nervous system, we also talked about the increased venoconstriction, so it causes constriction of the venous system which increases the venous return back to the right atrium and obviously that will lead to a greater preload so the stretch of the myocardium and then greater um, blood into the systemic circulation and finally we talked about briefly the hormonal changes that occur um, we, we mentioned that they supplement the changes that happen in the sympathetic nervous system so these are some things for you to think about next time you go for a run think about MMAH mechanical, metabolic, autonomic, humoral, and try and get these mechanisms related to the sensations that you're feeling as you're actually exercising. Now, thank you very much for your time. I hope you found the video useful, and I'll see you soon.